Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Aspire Go 15, the AG15 series. I'm gonna take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and many of the components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer through the start menu, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip your computer over to access your bottom case screws. Now there are 10 screws in this bottom case, after you remove those screws, you're going to take a small, flat, plastic pry tool and you're going to go across the seam of the bottom case and pry it up from your computer. It's generally best to start near the rear, near one of the two hinge assemblies. I found it easiest from this middle section right here to start prying it up. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge. Go nice and slow but firm. And if you get stuck going in one direction, leave it, go to the other side and continue in the other direction. Once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your project, as well as any of the replacement or upgrade components for this specific model, the AG1551P, there will be a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a list of all those tools and supplies and replacement parts. Now, before touching anything in a computer, it's always best to remove or at least unplug your battery. A computer is safest to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. Here's your battery right down here. This battery has an Acer part number of AP23A8L. It's a 53 watt hour, 15 volt battery. I will have all that information below in the description if you're looking for your own replacement, but I will have a replacement battery included in that list I told you about below in the description. It's held in by these two screws on either side and it plugs into the motherboard right here near the green arrow. Now, as with any cables or wires in a computer, avoid pulling on them when at all possible, just manipulate the plug. So as you see here, there's a grip on either side, so you can use a pry tool or your fingernails to wiggle that out of that port right there. If you pull on wires or cables in a computer, you could damage them, and sometimes you can pull them right out of the plug. So it's always best just to work on the plug itself. And I guess the last thing to mention about a battery replacement like this, if you are here because your computer's not turning on, your battery may be bad and you may need to replace it. But keep in mind that most laptop computers should still turn on and function with a bad battery as long as the charger's plugged in. So if your computer's not turning on, there is most likely another reason other than just a bad battery. If you would like help troubleshooting your laptop, I will have a link above, also below in the description, it'll be the full troubleshooting video for a laptop that's not turning on so you can find the cause and fix it. This is your RAM right here. It's underneath this metal guard. You can take a pry tool and I put mine in here on the right hand side and you can pop that guard right off. Once you do, you will expose these two RAM ports right here side by side. Most of you will have a single 16 gigabyte stick that comes with the computer, leaving this port here for an upgrade. Now Acer says that this computer has a maximum RAM value of 32 gigabytes. However, because of the speed of your CPU, I would assume that this computer could handle faster speeds than just the 32 gigabytes. So if you do upgrade beyond that, leave a comment, let me know how it works out for you. Let me know if the computer actually sees it and, and uses it. And then I can include that information below for others uh, watching this video. As far as the RAM specs for this, these are two Sodium DDR5 RAM ports. Uh, it takes 5600 megahertz RAM in dual channel mode. I will have all that information below in the description if you need it. I will also include a couple different options in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. I will include a single 16 gigabyte stick if you're looking to upgrade by adding one or if this one has gone bad and you're replacing it, but not wanting to spend a whole lot of money. I will also include a 32 gigabyte kit, which will include two 16 gigabyte sticks. Again, if this one has gone bad 
and you're looking to replace it, but also maximize your RAM. The way that you operate RAM, there are two spring-loaded metal arms on either side of the RAM stick. You would gently pry those apart away from the RAM stick. The RAM will then release. Oftentimes, it'll even pop up a little bit, and then you can grab it in the center and slide it out of this port right here. To get the RAM back in, as you notice on your RAM stick, there's a long section and a short section. So you can't put the RAM in upside down. It can only go in the correct way. And then once you get it in nice and flush and straight, you just press down in the center of the stick. These arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. And I guess the last thing I'll mention about a RAM replacement or upgrade, I always advise my customers, if you're looking for max speed, max performance in your computer, Upgrading your RAM is one of the easiest and cheapest ways you can do that. So I always recommend to max out your RAM. If you do want more performance, uh, I also recommend upgrading your storage, which is right down here. This is a single M.2 PCIe NVMe. It takes Gen 4 2280 solid state drives. I will have all that information below in the description if you're looking for help with a replacement but I will also include several replacement and upgrade options in that link I told you about with the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. I will have a 500 gigabyte solid state drive if you're just looking to replace a bad one and spend as little as possible, but I will also have a couple upgrades if you're looking to upgrade. I will have a one terabyte stick and a two terabyte stick. And as a side note, guys, about these storage devices, if you're looking for a quick little tutorial on how hard drives and various kinds of solid state drives are different, uh, why some may be better in, in certain situations, I will have a video link below in the description, and it will be that. It'll be a quick little intro tutorial showing you the various ins and outs of storage devices so you can learn them a little better. The way this solid state drive works, it's held in by a single screw right down here in the middle. Once you undo that screw, you can easily take it out of this port on the motherboard right there. And I guess the last thing to mention about a drive replacement, if you are installing a new drive to your computer, you may need to install an operating system onto it afterwards. I will have two different video links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10 onto an Acer computer. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. Your CMOS battery is located right here, wrapped in black electrical tape, and the wire goes underneath the solid state drive and plugs into the motherboard right here. So depending on what you're doing, it may be easier to remove your solid state drive to get at your CMOS battery. You can do that by undoing this single screw here and pulling the solid state drive out from its port right here. If you're here to replace the CMOS battery, it's held on by double-sided tape, so you can just easily pop that right off, and it unplugs from the motherboard right here. I will have a CMOS battery replacement option below in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. If you're here to reset BIOS, then you don't need to physically take the battery up. You can leave it stuck down there. You would just need to unplug it from the motherboard, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset BIOS. As a reminder, again, don't pull on the wire, just use your fingernails or a pry tool to get that plug out of that port. As a quick note, this procedure in most cases will only reset your BIOS system settings. It will not reset your BIOS password. For more information on BIOS password issues, check below in the FAQs. And I guess as a last thing to mention about this kind of a procedure, this resetting of BIOS is a common troubleshooting step if your computer's not turning on. If that's why you're here, there will be a video link below in the description. That will be a full tutorial video showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop that doesn't turn on so you can find the cause and fix it. Your Wi-Fi card is right here in the center of my screen near your fan. It's held down by a single screw. After removing that screw, you can pull it out of the port. And then all you have left are these two antenna wire. These are just snaps. They pull directly up and off of the Wi-Fi card to remove. And to get them back on, they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap those back on. Keep in mind, you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you try to force it. So go nice and slow, be patient. It could be a pain in the butt if you're not used to it, but you will be able to get those back on.
This is a Wi-Fi 6 card, uh, 802011AX Intel card. I will have all the Wi-Fi card info below in the description. I will also include a replacement Wi-Fi card in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. And I guess the last thing to mention about a Wi-Fi card replacement, if you are having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you can't see your Wi-Fi options, your Wi-Fi card could be bad, it could need to be replaced, but it could be something else. I will have a troubleshooting video below in the description. It'll show you how to troubleshoot if you cannot see your Wi-Fi options. You may be able to fix it that way without having to come in here and do an invasive repair like this. So you have two speakers in this computer, one near the bottom left of my screen, one near the bottom right. The bottom right one is these white and blue wires that come here under your solid state drive and plug into the motherboard here. If you do need to remove your solid state drive to access that, it's a single screw right here near the bottom, and then this solid state drive will pull out of this port there. This left speaker goes the black and red wires up here, plugs into motherboard, right there. So again, as a reminder, do not pull out on these wires. They are especially fragile, these speaker wires. Just pull the plug out of the port right there. Also, these speakers are not actually screwed down. If you see these colored rubber washers over the posts for sound insulation, that's all that's holding them down. So you can wiggle that right off of those posts if you're looking to get those speakers out. Now, I guess another thing to shout out with these speakers is if you are having sound quality issues, if your audio is not consistent across different software, it could be that your speakers are bad and they may need to be replaced, but more likely it's a system or driver issue. If you would like help troubleshooting that, I will have a video link below in the description. It'll show you how to make sure that your system and your drivers are fully updated. So here's your fan right here and your heat sink goes over the CPU over near the fan and the vent. To get your fan out, you have this single screw here and this screw here. After undoing those screws, it plugs into the motherboard right here. Now, as a reminder, these are extremely fragile wires and fans. They're notorious for popping out of either the fan or the plug. So be very careful when removing that. To get at your CPU to remove your heat sink, it would be these three screws right here. Now, I don't know why you're watching this video. Some of you are here to replace a bad fan. Some of you are here to clean your computer, clean out your fan, clean out your vents. Others of you may be here because your computer is actually overheating and you're trying to fix that. But for any reason, if you come into a laptop computer and you expose the thermal paste to air for any reason, um, it needs to be reapplied. Once thermal paste has been exposed to air, it's then compromised and it needs to be reapplied. If you would like help with any of that, I will have a video tutorial link above, also below in the description. It will be an overheating laptop fix video. And one of the things it will show you is how to clean off all the old thermal paste before putting new stuff on. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste. And it will also show you the correct amount to put down. If you put down too much thermal paste, you end up locking heat in rather than facilitating its transport out. So again, that video will be available if you would like down in the description. You have your USB board right here. If you're trying to access that, it connects to the motherboard via this ribbon cable here, goes across the panel here and plugs in over here. Now these ribbon cables, I wanna point out something about them. You have several, you have your uh, touchpad ribbon cable that comes up here, your keyboard ribbon cable that comes up here, these are very common connectors in a laptop. These black clips are extremely fragile. And if you break them, you probably won't be able to find a replacement, which means that your ribbon cable may never securely attach again. Uh, so be very careful when operating them. The way that you do is you take a small, very, very flat pry tool. You go at it from this direction, the ribbon cable direction, slide it underneath the black clip from here, and then gently pop it open it'll open kind of like a book cover. It'll open from the bottom and the hinges will be on the top. And again, be very careful when popping those up. That's pretty much everything in the body of the laptop. If you are looking to get at your LCD assembly, you would undo the screws on the right and the left of my screen to the hinge assemblies. And then you would make sure to unrun these antenna wire from the Wi-Fi card. They're threaded down here just so. You would unrun those because those go up through the hinge assembly. 
On this hinge assembly, you have the LCD cable that comes through it, which plugs into the motherboard right here. So you'd want to undo that as well. And then after doing all those things, you'll be able to get your LCD assembly off. If you're trying to replace the actual LCD inside the LCD assembly, instead of the entire LCD assembly itself, I will have a video tutorial below in the description. It'll be a general tutorial showing you how to replace an LCD inside an LCD assembly. If you need more help with your specific model, if you can't figure it out from watching that general tutorial, leave me a comment and I can help you out. But that's the end of this video, how to get inside the Acer Aspire Go 15 and access many of the internal components. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions. I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.